My name is Lisa Chase, and I'm the director of the Vermont Tourism Research Center at University of Vermont Extension. And I'm also the chair of the Global Agritourism Network. Here in Vermont, agritourism, meaning working farms that are open to visitors for education, recreation, overnight stays, entertainment, and direct sales. Agritourism has long been so important to Vermont for contributing economically to farms and ranches, as well as to our rural communities and for sharing our agricultural heritage with visitors. Whether these visitors are coming from far away or whether they're our neighbors, so many people today have no idea where their food comes from. And farms and ranches that are open to visitors play a critical role in promoting agricultural literacy, while at the same time bringing new revenue streams to our farms and our communities. But while agritourism has been important to many of our states for decades now, it didn't receive much attention at the federal level until in 2019, when Representative Wexton from Virginia launched the Bipartisan Congressional Agritourism Caucus with Representative Rouser from North Carolina. And then they relaunched the Congressional Agritourism Caucus in 2021. Just two months ago, a little less than two months ago, on August 11th of this year, Representative Wexton and Representative Newhouse from Washington introduced the Bipartisan Agritourism Act. The full name of this act is at the top of the slide and they clearly had someone on their team who was very good at clever acronyms. We organize this webinar today because we know that a lot of people working in agritourism, from the farmers and the ranchers to the planners and regulators, the tourism professionals and the researchers studying agritourism, we have questions about what the Agritourism Act is all about. And also a lot of folks are wondering how can we get involved in this effort to support agritourism throughout the US at the federal level. So a few organizations, the NAFTMA International Agritourism Association, Farmstay, the National Extension Tourism Network, and the Global Agritourism Network all came together to host this webinar. And we are so grateful to our panelists for joining us today. Our panelists are listed here on this slide and we'll introduce them one by one in just a moment. But first, let's take a little time to see who is in this virtual space with us. We're now gonna launch a poll. And those of you who have been involved in our agritourism webinars in the past will recognize this poll. You can check, it asks you to describe yourself and you can check everything that applies. So if you're a farmer, but you also work in government or you're an educator too, you wear many hats all at the same time. So check as many boxes as you'd like that describe yourself. And in just a moment, from this poll, anonymous results, just saying what percent is in what category. In the meantime though, uh, for those of you who are willing to share who you are, if you'd like to go into the chat box at the bottom of your screen, select everyone, if you're willing to share with everyone, the default is hosts and panelists, but if you'd like to introduce yourself to everyone, Go ahead and let us know who you are, where you're from, and what kind of work you do with agritourism. And I'm now going to end the poll and share the results. So on your screen, you can see that we are primarily about half farmers and ranchers. We also have a great mix of other folks working in agritourism in a variety of different ways from 
business owners and managers, to tourism professionals, to government, educators, and nonprofit. Now that we have a sense of who's here in the virtual room with us, I'm looking forward to turning it over to our panelists. And we're gonna start with Susie Spar, who is the executive director of the NAFTMA International Agritourism Association. Susie? Thank you so much, Lisa. It is truly a pleasure to be here and to introduce our panelists today. I want to first start off with Congressman Jennifer Wexton, um, but I'm going to do a quick side note. Chris, is Congressman Wexton, Congresswoman Wexton available at the moment? We are trying to get her on, but uh, TVD. So okay. both of you could introduce her, but uh, I will let you know. Thank you. Then we will move on directly to Congressman Newhouse. So Representative Dan Newhouse is a lifelong resident of Central Washington and is honored to represent the fourth district in Congress. A third generation Yakima Valley farmer, he brings a world, real world experience to Congress as a businessman and former state legislator. He currently serves on the Appropriations Committee and from 2009 to 2013, he served as the director of Washington State's Department of Agriculture, where he listened to the concerns of Washington farmers and promoted the state's agricultural resources. Representative Newhouse lives in Sunnyside, Washington with his wife, Joan, and he has two adult children. And the Newhouse family continues to operate an 850 acre farm where they grow hops, tree fruit, and grapes. Congressman Newhouse, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Susie. Appreciate that, and Lisa, and all of you. Uh, would you like me to say anything? Or I see we have Ms. Wexton with us. So would you also like to um, uh, introduce her? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, at this, I can go ahead and introduce Representative Wexton as well. So Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton has been serving the people of Northern Virginia, opposite side, obviously of the country from Congressman Newhouse. And she's been for over two decades as a prosecutor, attorney, an advocate for abused children, Senator. Now in Congress, she serves on the Appropriations Committee and her subcommittee assignments focus on funding for transportation and housing and the legislative branch. Representative Wexton is also a member of the House Budget Committee, which provides oversight of the legislative process. Representative Wexton is the founder of the Bipartisan Congressional Agritourism Caucus, which supports the agritourism industry and highlights its importance to local economies and communities. She lives in Leesburg, Virginia with her husband, two sons, and two rescued Labrador retrievers. Representative Wexton, thank you also for joining us today. We can, start, we can start off with you, Wexton, if you'd like to say a few words. Ahead of Representative Wexton's remarks, we want to make viewers aware that she recently announced a diagnosis of progressive supranuclear palsy, a kind of atypical Parkinsonism disease that makes it difficult for her to speak clearly. Please turn on captioning to read her comments as she speaks. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late. It's been a full day. It's good to see everybody. District. Starts in Loudoun County, which is about 50 miles outside of Washington, D.C. There's an arc, an arc of about, about 120 degrees of the south, to the south and northwest of, 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 of D.C. The district is, is, is excerpts of D.C. It's, it also includes a really rural, big rural part of it as well, big rural district as well. A lot of different, different kind of territory. 
And your tourism is so important to Sweden and Virginia. It's, it's over 20,000 jobs. It's over a billion dollar business in the state. Oh, well. And it's a driver for rural and rural and family communities across the country. I think the reason that we have to start this is because it has been loud in the county. The outside of Washington, D.C., about 50 miles from the most firm and different districts. It's in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's in the Blue Ridge Mountains. The hills and everything is absolutely gorgeous. It's really hard to get, get, get around in there because of traffic and everything. And one of the things we do, I mean, people who live out there is because it's so beautiful. We call it, we call it country living. We have to live in county, the population is 150,000, over 450,000. It's going like crazy. The fastest growing municipality in the, in the nation. It's too good for us to hear. The fastest growing municipality in the nation for a long time. It's been really hard to give you, give you this growth under control. I think that I realize when I talk to people in my district who are farmers, is that they want to be able to keep the, they want to be able to keep the, keep the family farms in the family, and they're just hard to do that. And they have they have they have the pressure from developers, from developers. And I think that the agriculture and politics is they decide to do it's for it's for its people who want to keep this family farms in the family. So it's nothing hard to do with it, but it's really hard for everybody to do that. So I'm sorry about I'm sorry about that. Do you, you have a sorry, sorry, do you have an issue with me saying the whole course? It's very hard for me to speak out loud. And there's a need to better than others to say that's a good impression. Uh, so yeah, but it's really, really difficult for me. Because there's one of the things, the things I like about the agritourism podcast is that agritourism is a charming character of the rural community. Agritourism enables small farmers to expand their businesses and increase their profit. We keep small family farms up and running. We find it from family to family. They want to be able to keep the most of those generations. They want to sell their, they want to sell their, they don't want to, don't want to sell the property to developers, and that's really hard for them to be able to do that. But there's often great family friendly activities that attract visitors from across the region. Things like things like you know, picks and things like that. They're popular and now we're getting the season we get corn mazes and some patches and things like that, which is very popular as well. At first hand with farm hunters and district and heard all those stories which drove to the creation of the tourism companies, which they started with by person along with the crowds or their lives. So it's very hard to have a way to do that. I said, people have been trouble understanding me in the city and sort of bring me to this time. I'm sorry about this. So, uh, so, so there's an introduced the Agriturism Act, which is accelerating the growth of rural innovation and financial measures. I'm not speaking very well today. I'm going to try to keep that short. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm going to try to short. I'm going to try to try to speak today. It's really hard for me to so try to try to speak, but uh, today is a start back over again. I'm going to try to share a little break and see if I can play that program, okay? But I'm pass it to Chris to work for me, but I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Wexton. Congressman Newhouse, we'd like to offer some opportunity for you to share some thoughts at this time. Susie, Lisa, and everybody that's on the call, thank you very much uh, uh, for having me be part of this roundtable talking about agritourism. Uh, it's, it's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be uh, associated with this effort and certainly with my colleague from Virginia, Ms. Wexton, who is a very uh, uh, proponent of improving the ability for farmers to be successful if they decide to um, utilize agritourism, which is a, truly a, a, a growing part of the agricultural industry. Uh, not just in the, in her area, but I, I can tell you around the country, and certainly in my area as as well. Um, and, it, and as you guys know, it includes a lot of different things. Uh, agritourism is a broad, uh, 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 I guess you could say, uh, the definition of that is very broad, uh, from uh, on farm retail to uh, you pick or we pick kind of uh, uh, enterprises, direct, even direct delivery from farms to uh, consumers. Uh, farmers markets certainly are are growing in population and popularity around the country. Um, uh, all of these things and more that uh, you know, I guess the imagination is the only limit we have as to what kind of things people can get involved with when it comes to these kinds of businesses. <clears throat> um, and so it's really exciting to see and to see businesses that do things that are 
uh, innovative, creative, and accomplish so many different positive things. Uh, uh, certainly, monetarily, you know, businesses have to be successful. So that that's a great uh, uh, alternative for many farms to be able to utilize this if they can and if they want to. Uh, but I I look at it even in a uh, a broader sense. You guys know that. Um, uh, this country used to be based on the agricultural industry. We were we were a very agrarian society, right? Uh, many families were engaged in some way in the agricultural industry. Today, not so much. Uh, agriculture accounts for only a, uh, I think it's above one, but less than two percent of the population is engaged in farming, and. Um, I guess that's you know the, 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 just a natural uh, change that we have been witnessing, but we lose something when that happens. Um, that connection to the land, that connection to things that are produced by 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 your own bare hands, um, and not to, not that you can blame people for this, but they also lose an understanding of what uh, agriculture needs are and the challenges that they face and uh, what it takes to be successful in farm in farming um, that connection there uh, is is really really difficult uh, to to build and so important that we do uh, because you know we need to have a strong agricultural industry we need to have uh, people connected at least and have an understanding of agriculture because in order for that, us to be able to continue, I'm a, I'm a farmer myself, and I can I can tell you that many of our decision makers, uh, as well-meaning as they may be, really lack a an understanding of agriculture. And I think through agritourism, uh, that's another benefit that we can we can see coming that people get truly get agriculture if they meet their local farmers, if they understand what it takes to produce the fruits and vegetables that, uh, or meats and different products that they enjoy on a daily basis. And, and uh, if we can have a better understanding of that, I think we'll have better rules, better regulations, better laws, and ensure a successful future for the farming industry. So, so like, like I said, I look at this in a, in a couple of different ways. Not only a, a great alternative for farms that want to uh, embrace agritourism, but also in the bigger picture, a better understanding by the entire American population of the importance of agriculture and have that true connection uh, so that we can ensure a successful agricultural industry on into the future. So I'm very proud to be able to be part of this. Um, uh, Congresswoman uh, Wexton, like I said, is a, a champion of this issue, and so kudos to her for uh, for leading the charge. Uh, her co-chairman in the caucus, David Rouser, also is a, a very strong advocate of the success of agritourism and the success of our agricultural industry. So um, I, I just appreciate a, a little bit of an opportunity to be with you and and share with you why I think this is important and why I'm taking my time and energy to make sure that this can be successful. Thank you very much. I also understand that you have another commitment that begins in about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah. we understand that you would need to um, hop off earlier rather than later. But thank you again very much for taking the time and we will follow up um, as we go. So I now want to okay. introduce Bubba White, who is the legislative director for Congressman David Rouser, who represents North Carolina's seventh congressional district. And Representative Rouser serves on the House Agriculture Committee. Bubba, would you like to take some time to say a few words on behalf of Representative Rouser? Absolutely, and 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 thank you all for for having us today and uh, inviting Congressman Rouser to to speak of this. Um, 
as y'all mentioned, uh, Representative Wexton has, has been a great leader on this issue as well, and, and we're glad to partner with her office uh, on working on these issues and, and partner with Congressman Newhouse's office to to introduce, reintroduce the Agritourism Act, uh, very similar to, to Congresswoman Wexton's district, North Carolina 7th Congressional District, continues to grow with a, with a suburban lean to it, uh, as well as uh, North Carolina 7th Congressional District. We've, you know, historically has been very heavy within the agricultural community, but uh, as the Raleigh-Durham area grows and as North Carolina continues to grow, uh, we continue to have newcomers that come into that area and, and move in. They're, they're building more houses than than, than planting crops these days. Um, so uh, it's really important as we integrate uh, those folks in, into, into North Carolina's 7th Congressional District and, and throughout the state and throughout the country uh, of showing them that that way of life that, that has sustained those areas for, for generations. Uh, North Carolina's 7th Congressional District is extremely heavy within the livestock industry as well as um, specialty crops such as melons and, and sweet potatoes. Um, but it also all stems back to to the tobacco industry that, that built our, our neck of the woods. Um, the historical context of that being very small family farms, usually 40 to 100 acres, nothing nothing a lot bigger than that, uh, which really constitutes itself well to, to small um, agritourism type uh, facilities where we're able to bring folks on that can do the pick your own and things such as that, uh, as well as provide a great educational opportunity that's already been discussed uh, today. Uh, I think a lot of these folks in North Carolina, at least, are coming from out outside of the state, or at least outside of the area, uh, and providing them with the opportunity uh, to come on to, to our farms, not only to provide that educational opportunity, but also provide a, a secondary revenue uh, generator for, for our agricultural families is, is a great opportunity. And, and establishing an office within USDA to advocate on behalf uh, of those small farmers and, and those uh, uh, business ventures is a great opportunity to continue to integrate um, these these families and, and communities into our agricultural societies. Uh, so really do appreciate uh, not only uh, other members of the caucuses work on this issue, but also uh, Extension and, and these other outside groups that are really helping us drive this point home. I think it's, it's crucially important, as Congressman Newhouse said, um, that that we continue to educate as, as our society kind of moves away from everybody having their hands in agriculture, uh, whether it, you know it used to be your your parents or your grandparents were involved in it and and kind of uh, feeding themselves. That's that that generational gap keeps getting wider and wider. And so it's important that we continue to to allow folks to to come onto these these farms and facilities and 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 take a little bit of learning. Uh, I also think that it's really really important as uh, we continue to see. Uh, at least in North Carolina and other places, we continue to see folks that that really go after and and don't understand uh, that agrarian way of life and and the agricultural industry uh, and and maybe misunderstand it in a way where where they may try to harm it. And I think that uh, the work of this caucus, the work of the agritourism industry, is is to change that. Uh, and that's one of the main reasons that uh, Congressman Rouser uh, and Congresswoman Wexton uh, approached this caucus and and wanted to come up with this idea. With was, was to educate. Uh, and so we are really appreciative of all y'all's work and appreciative of the caucus's work. And we look forward to continuing to see this grow as we look into uh, a farm bill over the, over the next few months, how we can integrate agritourism and integrate these secondary revenue generators uh, into that system. So again, appreciate y'all, appreciate uh, the caucus's work and uh, Congressman Wexton, Congressman Newhouse, uh, and look forward to any questions. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bubba. We in just a moment, uh, but I first want to introduce Chris Capson, um, who is the Legislative Director for Representative Wexton and has been a part of the agritourism legislation process from the start. Uh, we have spoken numerous times about uh, this particular process as it has developed. So Chris originates from the Northern Virginia area, and I'd like to turn it over now to Chris to add a few words to what Congressman Wexler had said earlier. Thanks so much, Susie and, and Lisa for putting this on. Um, and yeah, I think uh, someone had mentioned it in the chat, but just for everyone's awareness, Congresswoman Wexler unfortunately was just diagnosed with a con condition that significantly impacts her ability to speak. So I understand it can be hard to understand her at some point, but, um, you know, Congressman Newhouse and Bubba did a great job uh, 
summarizing what we're all about with the Congressional Agritourism Caucus. Um, and I'll just add a couple of things so we can get to questions. Um, and we're very excited about this. We found it to be an extremely bipartisan and broad geographical um, appealing effort. You know, we have strong representation from both coasts, the Midwest. Um, I was in Wyoming last year advocating for this. And, you know, obviously agritourism looks a little different there than um, other places. But, you know, with the dude ranches and farms they have out there, um, a lot of similarities more so than you might think. Um, also wanted to share a couple of things we're, we're working on through the congressional appropriations process that um, Congresswoman Wexton and Congressman Newhouse both sit on. Um, a couple of years ago, um, we were able to secure a couple of items in the USDA funding bill uh, to support agritourism, one to update existing resources on the USDA website for agritourism businesses, um, which we see as sort of a precursor to what this office will hopefully be able to do down the line, um, as well as collecting additional nationwide survey data on agritourism through a follow-on study to the 2022 agriculture census, um, which we've been told will be seeing the data you know, early next year when the census data comes out. So we're very excited about that and you know, hope that data can inform our efforts and just general awareness and, and the strength and continued growth of the industry. Um, also want to mention that um, Senator Tammy Baldwin has been very interested in uh, introducing a companion bill on the Senate side. So hoping to make this a bicameral effort here very soon. Um, but I think I will leave it there and look forward to hearing everyone's questions and working with you all in this effort going forward. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, I do not believe that we have Chris MacArthur here. We'd originally thought we might have another individual to represent uh, Representative Newhouse since needed to move on, but I believe that possibly has not been able to happen. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Scotty Jones, who is with Farmstay USA and has been compiling questions to provide out at this point to Bubba and to Chris um, to obtain further information about this process, about the caucus and about the legislation. So Scotty. Okay, thank you very much. And these are gonna be open-ended questions for either of you to answer as you see fit. Um, a lot of these questions came in as people registered and then we have questions following. But the very first one is gonna uh, be, this is a, the Agritourism Act. I assume it has not passed yet. So how many congressional members are gonna be needed to sign to get it passed? And now that I know that there's a Senate um, pro proposal as well, what do, what do you guys see for timing of this? And what do you see for success of getting this act through? And is it related to the Farm Bill? Uh, I'll take the last part of that question first. Yes, very much so. Um, that's, you know, I think our number one priority is to include this in the Farm Bill process, which I know um, both Congressman Rouser and Congressman Newhouse have been working with us on, and Senator Baldwin is also advocated for on the Senate side. So, um, you know, Bubba being, you know, yeah. Congressman Rouser being on the Agriculture Committee will know a lot more about that process than me, but, um, you know, that is that is our, our, our priority right now. Uh, so happy to turn it over to him for, yeah. for any more insight. <laughs> Absolutely, Chris. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, timing wise, I, I think, you know, as, as as most folks know, the 2023 or 2018 Farm Bill expired on September 30th. Um, we, we're, we're currently working through the process of, of bringing a new Farm Bill through the committee process and onto the House floor. Um, However, the the appropriations uh, and funding the, the federal government is also very important. Um, so we're a little bit uh, we're a little bit of behest of the the appropriations process. Um, the Chairman Thompson of the House Agriculture Committee is committed to, to getting a a farm bill done as soon as we can. Uh, and as Chris mentioned, we we would definitely want to see the Agritourism Act included in that, uh, and and continue to kind of advocate on different areas where agritourism can be integrated into some of those those federal farm programs. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it's it's a little bit of a moving target right now on the farm bill, uh, and and unfortunately, that's that's all I know. But the, the but timing is 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 fluid. Okay, so then the next question that we probably all have is so 
this Agritourism Act is to set up an office of agritourism underneath the USDA. So a position, I assume, is that correct? And do we have to kind of wait for the farm bill before? I mean, could this happen with, without a farm bill? You know, and, and Chris can, and I guess since we're in the majority, I'll, I'll answer there, Chris, but, you know, obviously any bill can can move across the floor uh, through the regular legislative process. Uh, however, I, I will mention that uh, the easiest way for bills to move is a part of a larger vehicle. Uh, we see that through appropriations processes, the National Defense Authorization Act, some other things like that. Um we believe, and, 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 and I won't speak for Chris, but we believe that the best vehicle for this bill would be through the farm bill. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, as we talk about educating members on agritourism and, and the general public, you know, as we continue to try to find support for the Agritourism Act, uh, we're going to keep, keep working through that process. However, I, I don't know that as we look at what what's kind of transpiring in the House of Representatives right now that that the Agritourism Act um, would would move through on say a suspension of the rules which would have to, have to be two hundred ninety wow. plus uh, co sponsors on a piece of legislation um, so we think that the farm bill is the best vehicle for it uh, and and uh, that's that's been our goal and that's the goal we're going to continue to to work at. Yeah, I would agree with all of that. And we would obviously love to see 290 plus co-sponsors. And uh, I'm sure that will be a question as to how we can you know, move towards that goal. Right now, we have a small but mighty group of 14, um, but hoping to to see that grow, especially as a you know direct result of, of talking with you all today. But um, you know, happy to to talk more. I'm sure there are questions about how you know you all can support this. So that was my next, to that now. <laughs> that was my next question. I was gonna. We a lot of us want to know how can we support you? Are we supporting you at a state level, at a federal level? Are there are agritourism associations that can help? What do What do you need us to do? Because we are all very interested in getting this position in place mm -hmm. uh, within the USDA, um, because that's where we're all coming from. Yeah, I mean, the short answer is all of the above. Um, any support helps. Um, you know, obviously, we in our office and, and Congressman Newhouse and Rouser's office are doing, you know, member to member, office to office outreach, but nothing moves a member of Congress more than hearing from their own constituents. So, you know, I understand that we have people on this call from pretty much all over the country and, you know, one thing we found is that there are hardly any members of Congress who don't have some form of agritourism in their districts. Um, so, you know, I think the best thing that you can do is, you know, just go get in touch with your member of Congress. Uh, we're all very accessible. You can call us, email us. Um, you know, if you're coming to D.C., try and set up a meeting. We, we always love meeting with our constituents and hearing, you know, what issues they're facing and how we can help. Um, I will also say we are the our office is putting together some materials on on our bill and, and the agritourism caucus that I will make sure to share with um, Susie and Lisa and everyone here that we can uh, share with you all. So that will um, also hopefully be helpful in in spreading the word. And so to that, or is it more that we go to our representatives rather than our senators to start with? Because this is a caucus from representatives, right? from the House of Representatives, not, or is that, it a total, who are the, who are the members of this caucus? Is it just House of Representatives? Right now we have, it's a, it's a, it's a caucus on the House side. So we okay. have uh, a number of, okay. of members of the House of Representatives, but um, would also love support on the Senate side. So I would say, do not restrict your, your outreach to one House of Congress. Um, I know uh, Senator Baldwin has been looking for a, uh, Senator to uh, co-lead the bill with, since we want to make sure this has strong bipartisan support. Um, so, especially if you're in a state with a, a Republican senator or two, would love to, you know, have them hear from you directly um, about how what this legislation would mean for for the industry and and all that. So, and 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 to Chris's point there, uh, as we talk about a farm bill, uh, the Senate's going to pass their version, House is going to pass their version, and and the way that those usually work is. Um, through a conference committee in which we kind of hash out our differences. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a, if there's a large uh, piece of support on the Senate side and a large piece of support on the, on the house side, that always helps your chances as we move towards a final, final product. Okay. That's great. And so 
we're going to assume this is going to get passed. We're going to assume this office is created. Uh, we're going to assume that a person is going to be the rep is going to be in the office. One person um, within the USDA. Um, what were, have your thoughts been behind what this position would do for us? What are you? What are your hopes and dreams that this will do? And do you need ideas? <laughs> So one of the things um, we wanted to do with this legislation is um, leave it very open-ended um, because as we've learned, just touring agritourism businesses in our district, there are new ideas coming up everywhere, every day um, as to how agritourism works. And I saw there were a couple of people asking in the chat, you know, is this, is agritourism defined in this legislation? And we purposely did not define it because we didn't want to exclude anyone. Um, by you know being too prescriptive as to what agritourism entails, um, so you know some of the things that we would want to see the director in the office do is to you know encourage and promote agritourism, to consolidate federal resources available to agritourism businesses, whether they're grants or loans or technical assistance or you know best practices, um, and put them in a very easy to access um, resource, whether that's online or, you know, in state um, agritourism entities or, or partners. Um, you know, one thing we found when we were researching this is that there actually was a, a resource guide for agritourism on the USDA website, but it was from, I think, the 90s, and it was a 3,000 maybe page document that was not searchable um, as a PDF, so essentially useless. Um, so we want to update that and make it much easier for, for farmers who, you know, we know have very little spare time, um, to be parsing through thousands of pages of, um, hard to read federal documents, um, to find out what kind of resources they might have available to them. Um, but another thing we found is that, um, some of the strongest resources that agritourism businesses have now are sort of informal networks among themselves. Um, what we found is that it's a very cooperative industry, you know, obviously there's always competition, but, um, especially in Northern Virginia, um, it seems that a rising tide has lifted all boats. So, you know, if one agritourism business is doing really well, then, um, that brings people out to that area. And while you're out there, you might want to go stop at three or four others. So, um, we see a lot of people, you know, sharing ideas, lending equipment, um, especially, you know, thinking during the pandemic when everyone was transitioning and people really wanted to go to agritourism businesses because it was one of the few things you could do that was safe and outdoors. Um, you know, sharing best practices on how to set up online payment systems or reservations or things like that. So uh, we would also want this office and the director to, you know, help facilitate those connections, whether they be regional or maybe, you know, maybe what's working for someone in North Carolina or Washington also works for someone in Virginia, but they would never make that connection without, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, linking entity. So those are just a few of the ideas we have. Um, but like I said, really want it to be open-ended because um, we've seen so much innovation and we would certainly not want to uh, tamp down on that in any way. So um, some of the questions all go around different associations or Farm Bureau or Farm Bureau, NFU support. So are you looking for also support? I mean, we can all go and talk to our reps, but are you looking for support from different bigger farm organizations to help push this through? And do you guys have that support? Have you, you thought to go look for it? Yeah, we've talked with a, a number of organizations and obviously more support is always better. Um, you know, a lot of the, the uh, wine and, and beverage groups that do agritourism, mm -hmm. you know, we have a ton of wineries here and obviously on, on the West Coast too. Um, they've been very supportive. We've worked with the Southeast Tourism Society since agritourism is such a big driver of, of tourism um, in our region. Um, and of course, um, Naftima and, and Susie has been a, a great partner as well. Um, but, you know, we're always looking to make new connections and partnerships. So, um, you know, if, if, you know, a state group or a group you work with might be interested in supporting this, definitely feel free to put them in touch with us. Okay, that's great. 
Um, and I and I didn't. So there are several questions. Which USDA department would this new agritourism office fall under? And I thought it was just going to fall straight under the USDA. So I'm going to ask that because apparently I don't know enough about the USDA. That is an excellent is question that. <laughs> Maybe, well, maybe I think I you, think we yeah. talked about it, Chris. I, I think the idea is that the secretary would designate the, the Office of Agritourism. Um, you know, where that falls, I think would kind of fall at the, the discretion of the secretary. I, I, you know, in my opinion, you know, you could you could see it being under rural development. You could see it being under under oh. some type of, of farm agency. Um, but I think that that would be best suited for the secretary to kind of look at their resources uh, and make a determination on on which uh, which office it would fit best under. Okay, so and this is something that comes up with a lot of us. So the question was, what role do you see state federal policy on agritourism in supporting? Lo so local planning, zoning, land issues. A lot of us have major regulatory issues that hold us back. And I know that there's state issues, but is there any thought for this office from a federal level being able to start to look out and help apply maybe some federal regulatory oversight? Well, I, I think that's kind of the idea behind the office is, is currently whether it's whether it's agritourism, whether it's it's uh, general rural uh, zoning issues, uh, there's a, there's a lack of advocacy on behalf of of those uh, of those stakeholders and the Office of Agritourism uh, could do exactly that. You you may not have a large uh, contract uh, with with a with a larger integrator or something like that. I think the the, the ability for the Office of Agritourism to interact. Uh, you know, with, with with those issues is is what this bill is is getting at, and so also that might help with our limited li with our liability legal um, issues as well. So there might be because we're all doing these state by state limited liability agritourism bills, but it'd be great if there was also a federal. So this position will be able to act in a federal um, way to to kind of maybe help all of us and then allow the states to copy what they're doing. Okay. Is it just, do you just see it as one person at this uh, point? point? Um, or is it an office? Because they talk about an office of agriculture. You all talk about an office of agritourism. So yeah. so I think that to Chris, Dan, Chris, Chris will know this better than me, but the, the idea of it being, again, open-ended uh, and having an opportunity for the secretary to to look at resources within the agency to be able to, to, to kind of chip away at that. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Yeah, the the legislation designates a a, a director, so there'd be at least one yeah. one position. But other than that, it, exactly as Bubba said, you know, we want to leave a lot of discretion to the secretary to to act as they see best fit. So, in your crystal ball, um, and the hoping that this gets included in the farm bill, and hoping that we have a funding funded um, government. Could we maybe see this next year? Could we 2024, 2025? Did you guys have a before everything blew up? Did you guys have a goal, a, a drop dead date at all? The the farm bill again expired September 30th. You know, most of the acting authorities within the farm bill expire sometime towards uh January 1. Um so in in a perfect world, we would we would be working through a, a farm bill. Uh, through the committee process, at, or you know, we'd be looking at floor time for for a farm bill. Unfortunately, with the appropriations process and some other issues, that hasn't quite come up yet. Uh, but you know, I, I think I think as we look at the Agritourism Act, it goes right along with um, the bill, which at this point is a bit in flux. But we're committed to making sure that we move a farm bill in time that that ensures that um, our farm programs and nutrition programs. Uh, can American people. Okay. And then one of the other things that a lot of us are interested in is grants, grants and other kinds of support like that. So USDA right now has only really one grant that even mentions agritourism. So is the hope that there will potentially through this office be their own grants coming out is if the funding is there. I mean, if the, all the steps happen, was that also an idea within so your group? 
the legislation doesn't create any new grants, but one of the things we would want the office and the director to do would be to advocate within USDA for agritourism to, you know, whether it's within existing grants um, that, you know, could be tweaked to make eligibility more expanded or things like that, or, or just through increased awareness of opportunities that might not be a, a well known among agritourism businesses, but are, you know, very relevant. So okay. that is sort of, that's what we see there. Okay. And we went back yeah, to act, this. acting as a united voice within the agritourism industry in order to incorporate agritourism into existing USDA programs, I think is the overarching goal here to give mm -hmm. uh, agritourism entities a voice and a seat at the table. Exactly. Okay. Um, and a question that came up a lot is also how is agritourism defined in this legislative work? I mean, I know you said you don't have a defined term or explanation for agritourism, but how did you guys define it? Well, or I, we, we did not. Um, it, it does, we didn't want to be too prescriptive with a federal definition of agritourism. So it would be at the discretion of the secretary and then the office um, who, okay. you know, I think we all sort of know agritourism when we see it. Um, but we, again, did not want to exclude anyone by making too prescriptive of a de definition. I guess I was just, I think the question was, since you've put through an act, there must be something describing it, but I guess we can read that somewhere. So can you provide us links to that? But mm -hmm. also a number of people wanted to know if you could provide supportive letters of how we would go and approach our own representatives. So if there would be support material, and I think I heard you say that there will, you can forward that on. Yeah, we'll pass along uh, like a one pager flyer with information on both the Agritourism Caucus and the Agritourism Act that will um, have details on on both as well as how to get in touch with us um, so that members of Congress or you know participants here can can ask questions or, or get their members involved. OK, do you see other questions, Lisa, or? Susie, that I might have missed. I tried to combine a bunch of questions. I um, think one other additional question may be what else would be beneficial to the caucus as a whole, um, not necessarily just focusing on the legislation itself. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is is more members. Um, we have a good group, but um, Unfortunately, we had a, a number of members either retire or lose re-election last Congress, so that that ate into a bit of our our strength. Um, so we're always looking to add new members and and new voices, especially from from different regions around the country. We don't want it to just be you know both coasts, um, although that is obviously where there is a ton of agritourism. Um, so that would be the number th one thing I would say, and then. Um, you know, we're also trying to do more work here in D.C. to educate other members um, on the benefits of agritourism and uh, the need for this legislation. So uh, those are sort of the main focuses we have right now. OK, that's great. And thought, yeah, here in Oregon, I, I need to find out if I can get somebody on that agritourism caucus. OK. Um, are there other questions? tried to I'll, I'll chime in and say something that I think you've addressed somewhat but ha has come up multiple times so I'll ask it again is <clears throat> to clarify that the proposed agritourism act creates this office but doesn't have funding associated with it um, and so there were a variety of different questions in chat about how that would work and does that mean someone else is losing funding and could you speak to that generally oh I'll I'll talk just because me me and Chris have had some conversations around around the funding link here the 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 funding issue in in the 118th Congress uh, at least on the House side um, is very much connected to current House rules as we are looking at. Uh, appropriations funding, we have committed to, to reducing federal spending uh, through through the House Republican majority and and, and one of those, and, and that is including in the farm bill. I mean, we've got a CBO baseline of $1.5 trillion, but every single one of those $1.5 trillion are accounted for in existing nutrition and farm programs. So 
any bill that moves through the house it has to has to cut spending somewhere to put it somewhere else. Uh, we, uh, you know, in, in Congressman Rouser's uh, opinion, uh, the opportunity of creating this this uh, office of agritourism gives USDA more flexibility uh, to utilize some some other resources that it may have where it, where it's looking around at certain offices uh that 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 it could it could fit the office of agritourism into uh but yeah we we've absolutely had that conversation we understand um that that a lack of funding is is a concern but i, I also think that we look at this office of agritourism as an opportunity to open the door um to this industry to get this industry at the table with USDA as they're looking at other farm programs other grant programs that already have funding connected to them um this this would open the door to to get those folks to the table. I have another. So have how have you all maybe interacted with or not um, any tourism agencies or even Brand USA or which is I think our national tourism because in Europe it's tourism and ag that get together and support and fund and so here USDA is taking this all on but there is a component of we're bringing in guests. Um, from the outside onto our farms. And so has there been any conversation around that? We have talked a lot with uh, our local and regional tourism tourism agencies. Um, we have really strong groups here in Northern Virginia who have done a lot to support the agritourism industry. And we also got in touch with the uh, Southeast Tourism uh, Group this year, um, who have been a really great partner to work with too. Um, I think to your point about Brand USA, that is that is something we've talked about um, in the broader non-agritourism sense. Is you know the U.S.'s ability to advocate for itself as a tourism destination internationally. Um, so that's an interesting angle I hadn't uh, directly thought about in relation to this legislation, but certainly something we can look into. And so that might follow. So if the farm bill is a must pass, but this act is not included in it, will you try this as a standalone bill then? I think you try every bill as a standalone okay. and, and try to move it through a, <laughs> through a vehicle that it can get packaged into. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, obviously in the 117th Congress, uh, this legislation uh, was not passed and we reintroduced it again in the 118th. Uh, I think that's the the whole goal of Congress is, is you, you don't give up. You keep trying until until you can kind of uh, reach your goals. Okay. okay. Exactly. Okay. So I have one other question I think I'll pop in and ask. Is there an opportunity or a chance that this position within USDA could be created? just by USDA's determination without the legislation. Kind of side note with that, what has been um, the overall response from USDA to this particular proposed legislation? Um, that is a good question. Um, you know, we have been engaged with them. They've given us some some good advice on, you know, sort of the technical details of the bill. Um, you know, I don't, they, they don't usually comment pro or con on, on proposed legislation. You know, they, you know, they wouldn't want to come out against something and then we pass it into law and know that they were against it the whole time. That wouldn't set anyone up for success there. Um, but, you know, we have some great partners we work with at USDA, not necessarily on this, but um, on other related, you know, efforts that the Congresswoman works on. So, um, you know, we'd be happy, we'd be excited to work with them on setting up this office and making sure it is, uh, you know, doing what we envision it to and being a successful advocate for agritourism businesses and um, sharing the resources that are already available and improving them where we can. Um, there's a final question here that said, um, what talking points from con congressional members were there who opposed this bill? What were the things that people said why they didn't think this should pass or this? Well, I don't, I don't know added? that there's been any opposition to the bill. Um, okay. I, again, I think the, the answer is you're looking at creating a new program or a new office. Yeah. And and again, making sure that that is in a legislative vehicle that's going to move through Congress, I think, okay. is um, the two things that, that we're facing here. And, and again, uh, Chris has done a great job on, on outreach to other offices and working with other folks. Like I said, I haven't heard any opposition to it. It's just a matter of finding the right fit for it to move. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely no opposition. Just if anything, opportunities to educate people on the benefits and uh, get them on board. Okay, that's great. Anything else, Lisa? Well, it is really exciting to hear about something that has bipartisan support and that people <laughs> are, you know, really um, in favor of all over the country and doesn't doesn't matter on which political party you might be part of. So and I think agritourism speaks true um, in that sense. We've got just a couple minutes left. So I wanted to give both um, Bubba White and Chris Cat cats and a chance to sort of, you know, if you have any final summary words, um, please, you know, feel free to take a minute each um, to wrap things up and then we'll close things here. Nothing on my end. Appreciate y'all and appreciate the groups that are, that are joining the Zoom and, and listening to this. Uh, like I said, got to commend Chris and, and Representative Wexton's team. This is this has been their baby. We've been glad to join it and work with them on it. Uh, but this is um, this has been a great caucus uh, so far, and we look forward to continuing to work with them on 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 uh, moving it forward. Yeah, I don't have too much to add either, but want to thank Bubba and Congressman Rouser and Congressman Newhouse and, and all of you for all of your support on the bill. Um, but also, I know there's been, uh, I haven't been able to read every single message in the chat, but a lot of uh, questions and ideas. So, you know, we're always open to hearing from, you know, you all who are doing this work directly um, as to how you think this could best succeed. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us, reach out to your own members. Um, and we look forward to working with everyone and hopefully passing this into law very soon. Terrific. Thanks so much. So in closing, I want to thank Bubba White and Chris Katzen for sticking through the whole webinar and about 50 questions that were thrown at you. Um, I want to thank Representative Jennifer Wexton um, for joining, as well as Representative Dan Newhouse for joining and making remarks at the beginning, and also um, Scotty Jones for managing all the questions on behalf of Farmstay, and Susie Spar from the NAFTMA International Agritourism Association for actually managing to uh, talk all of you into joining us, even while you've got um, maybe a few other things on your mind right now in the house, you know, just some other things going on. <laughs> we had, we've had, it's been an exciting roller coaster just around this webinar. I can only imagine what it's like in uh, DC for you right now. Um, I also want to thank everyone who joined us here today. Saw a lot of questions in the chat about will this be recorded? How do we follow up? So the answer is um, keep 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 an eye on your inbox. Um, you will receive an email from Amber Hunt from UVM. My colleague, um, Amber Hunt at UVM, who's behind the scenes, making sure all the, the tech is working here. Um, she will send you an email. Everyone who registered for this webinar will get an email. It will contain a link to the, the recording, as well as all the information and links that um, Chris Katzen and others have brought up. And Chris has said he's happy to share his email address. So we'll include that too. And we know a lot of people were asking about, is there like a copy of a letter I could get or, you know, a list like people want, people would like some instructions on how to reach out to their members and how to um, be more engaged. So we'll put together some information and include that in the email. I will say being with a land grant university, University of Vermont, I can't officially advocate for anything but I certainly can provide information about how everybody else can um, get involved and be supportive. It's super exciting to see the progress that's happened, but as we learned today from talking to Chris and Bubba, um, there's a lot of work to do to get this done. And you know they're doing what they can do in DC, but a lot of it falls on our shoulders, you know, out in our respective states to, to reach out. So. Keep an eye out for the follow-up email from Amber and let's um, stay in touch and keep working together to support agritourism, our farms and our ranches and our communities. Thank you all so much.